I reached out to Alta Labs and asked them to send over their dead horse, the AP6 Pro. And the reason why I did that was because I was curious to know how this would perform in a realistically mounted area inside of my house. And it'd be centrally located, this smells like fresh paint. It's gonna be centrally located in the house so we'll be able to see how it performs when I'm standing at different distances around the house and through different kind of material, all sorts of walls, all that stuff. And I think that'd be really beneficial to kind of better help everyone gauge what kind of performance they can expect. So that's our goal for this video. Now we're not gonna get too much of the details for everything else like the unboxing and such, but we will cover some of the more important topics. Now before we get this mounted, you have to know that this does require PoE power. So you will have to provide power over Ethernet either via a PoE adapter or using a switch that can provide power over Ethernet. One more thing I want to mention before we get started is that I'm going to be plugging this into one of my Ubiquiti 1 gigabit switches and then we're also going to be hosting open speed tests on a server that is capable of hitting of 1 gigabyte per second speeds during speed tests and then some. And then we're also going to just be using a Wi-Fi 6 um, e capable laptop as well as an iPhone 13 mini just to kind of you know help round out our expectations here. So this mount looks like it'll probably fit on any standard US box, whether that be a round box or a rectangular box. And um, I'm gonna install it on a round box, so let's see if it actually fits. We will be mounting the bracket to this circular box like I mentioned before, but there is something I wanted to point out. So this is the standard screw that comes with this circular box, and the included screws that come with the unit are actually too small so i don't think these are meant to be mounted in here so i think you will have to provide your own screws however the screws that work with my box are too large for all of these holes so they actually don't fit in here by default i had to force this one in by just screwing through and you can kind of see that there's a little bit of damage here from doing that it's expanded this hole and that's probably okay, but I did want to point that out. While the screws don't really fit, at least the bracket seems to fit the standard sizes in the US, whether that be for round boxes or square boxes. Uh, so that's really cool. I can't get this to go in the hole very well. Oh gosh. Yeah, this is what I mean by it being just a little bit difficult. You gotta kind of force it in there and get in the hole. To mount the access point to the switch, you really just need to, I guess, match up the logo so the Vs are facing in the right direction. And there's also these little clips on both sides and you kind of just can see the outline on the back of there. So it slides on the rear first and then I think you give it this like awkward twisting motion. Is it to the right? And then to the left? Oh. All right, so on. Many, many minutes later. All right, let's try, keep trying. Oh, okay, I got it, I'm not touching it. All right, so it's not easy, it's not complicated but you just kind of got to get it just right. You slide it just a little bit and then you twist it and bop it and it's mounted. Holy cow. Oh, I forgot to plug it in. <laughs> Here's one quick look at the AP6 Pro next to the Ubiquiti U6 LR mounted to the ceiling. So this is what we're working with. Very small and clean, I like it. Well, first test will take place here in the office and we'll go around the entire house and record all the results from the office and every single other room inside of it. So let's get started. Here are my results. I ran five bandwidth tests in each room and then averaged those numbers to give you the results that you see here. I've listed about how far away I was standing during each test. So for the office, you can see I was about 11 feet away from the access point. The kitchen, I was 22 feet away from the access point and so forth. I really only included a 2.4 gigahertz band to give people an idea of what to expect for devices that are locked to the 2.4 gigahertz band. Here are the results again, but more visually represented because I have included the floor plan of my house. 
You can see that the AP6 Pro is mostly centrally located in my home and just how many walls are between me and the access point during testing. There is even a little icon representing where my servers live in their closet. Again, all these tests were performed against my local open speed test server, so none of the tests were done using internet speed test servers. I don't hate the mount. It's not hard to get the access point mounted. It is just extremely awkward. And before I continue on, I do want to make or check to make sure that this does fit a square electrical box and not just only a circle one because I'm kind of doubting everything right now. So we're just going to double check with my other access point and see if it does in fact line up with a square one. So come over here real quick so we can check that out together. This should be a lot more simple because we just really need to unplug these to get these out of the way. And we can simply just do this and make sure those holes line up. And it looks like they do and there's some wiggle room here, which is kind of cool. So I'd say that it definitely does fit um, for standard outlet sizes as well. And uh, I bet these screws are also have the same problem being too wide for these holes, but I think that'll be okay. Right, so I have the access point connected to a PoE injector so we could see how much power this thing uses. And it's been running for about 48 hours, I believe, and we've only managed to consume $3.41 for the entire year. So that's not very bad. Uh, there's our monthly cost, weekly, daily is zero. Um, let's see, so our rate is 13 cents. So that's how we got those numbers. We've currently consumed 0.18 kilowatts per hour. Uh, let's see, let's keep transitioning. We've got 49 hours, so almost 50 hours. And real-time consumption is between 6.9 and 7 watts. 7.1 watts there, so that's pretty good, I would say. And just so everyone knows, there are about three devices connected to this wirelessly, uh, and one of which is actually watching Twitch at the moment. So yeah, that's a pretty low power draw right there, and I'd say that's very efficient. Uh, at least in this setup. With that out of the way, I think it's time that we do a teardown and see exactly what the guts of this system are made out of. And just looking at it, there looks like there's only six screws that we need to remove. So let's figure out how to get this thing open. Right off the bat, it looks like it uses standard screws. So there's really nothing that we need to do here. I do need to get a smaller drill bit head though, apparently, because that one is too thick. Moving down to a PH1, it looks like that is the perfect size to remove that and it's coming right out with relative ease. Let's see, does this pop right open? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and remove both of these just in case. Hopefully that's not holding anything on the inside together. But we're about to find out if, it, if they are or not. Yep, it looks like those were, those two screws were actually holding the cover on. Okay, that came off with very little resistance. And look at that, wow. Taking a closer look, we can see the antennae for this. So the five gigahertz band does use four antenna. It is four by four. And the 2.4 gigahertz band is only two antennae. So I'm not really sure how this configuration works out exactly. Oh, there it is. So here's the four five gigahertz antenna and I guess this one maybe counts as two. I'm not entirely sure and also not an expert. So don't take my word for that. I could be very wrong on all of these antenna. If I also had a guess, this is probably for the five gigahertz band and this is for the two gigahertz band. Not entirely sure uh, if that's true either. Um, that's something that 
you know, I'm just kind of in, in taking a wild guess at. But here are all the connections for the antenna. I do like whatever this kind of amberish glue is. That's, that's looking really clean and nice. Not a whole lot to see in here. This is all metal. I do like that a lot. It's very clean, very simple, and very fast to boot. I'm really glad they spent the extra money on getting ferrous screws because I got it after working with like TP-Link and kind of getting non-ferrous and ferrous, this is making the reassembly process extremely easy. Um, so yeah, kudos there. Kudos for using ferrous screws. I really appreciate that. Finally, here are some comparison shots of the AP6 Pro versus Ubiquiti's U6LR and TP-Link's EAP670. You can tell the AP6 Pro is quite a bit smaller than both of the other devices in pretty much every dimension. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the performance of the AP6 Pro. It worked really well in my house, and with one, I was able to get pretty good coverage across the entire house without any major issues. So kudos there, and also the design of this looks awesome. It kind of reminds me of a pill a little bit, but I do like the design and the aesthetic, and also it is wife approved, so we can leave this mounted on the ceiling if I want. The only real complaint I have is with this mounting bracket. It's not that it's difficult to mount the access point to this, it's just awkward, really awkward. And you kind of have to just finesse it just the right way to get your access point mounted to it. The next complaint I have is with the included screws. While the included screws do fit these holes extremely well, at least in a US standard electrical box, whether it be on the wall or the ceiling, uh, those screws don't fit in the holes, which isn't a major deal breaker because most of the time you will have these with your electrical box. But the only downside with those is that these don't fit in the holes of the mounting bracket, which I don't know if this was purposely meant to be this way or if this mounting bracket is not meant to be mounted to an electrical box. Not entirely sure there, but you can kind of just force these through and it does work. You'll just leave some minor cosmetic damage to the mounting bracket, which honestly, not a big deal if there's minor com cosmetic damage to this. I don't think anyone's gonna actually care. You're not gonna see it ever, except for when you go to use it for the first time and use it for the last time. So I don't know, not a big deal. But yeah, anyway, overall, pretty happy with it. Performed great. I think Alta Labs is headed in the right direction. I'd love to see what they have for us in the future. And also, thanks Alta Labs for sending this over. But of course, videos like this would not be possible without you viewers out there. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace. It's, it's painful to watch. Um, okay, so let's try this again. All right, so I'll pull it. All right, there we go. Now twist it and bop it. Oh, that didn't work at all. Okay, so all right, let's try again. So pull it. There we go. And twist it. doesn't seem to be clicking in. Okay, this is kind of difficult. Okay, so attempt number four. I still haven't successfully done it. Um, okay, so pull it, twist it until you hear it pop. Oh, no popping. That's, this isn't working. Why isn't this working? This is, this is not easy. <laughs> Attempt number six. I don't know what attempt number I'm on. All right, twist it. Nope, this is not working. Okay, well, I don't know what to do. Seven. There we go. All right, finally. So, wait, no. Oh, I had the first pop. Dang it. All right, so twist it. Ugh. Ah, no. 
Come on, I thought I had it that time. I am so embarrassed right now. I can't get this thing to mount at all. I don't know what to do. It should be pretty simple as just sliding and twisting and until you hear the first click, but I don't, I don't hear anything. Oh my gosh, I think I finally got it. Holy cow. Why was that so difficult? I guess I was being too hard. Okay, so, all right. So let's try that one more time to see if I really got it or just got lucky. So, slide, first click, second click. Oh wait, I don't, I don't know if that's in or not. I think that's in. Okay. All right, yeah. So I think I was, I think I was sliding it too much. Like you don't have to, you barely have to slide it. It's more like just place, place, 